Hello, this is Dr. Chris Breimer. I am a geriatrician at the University of Western Ontario, London, Ontario, Canada. The date of this recording on the biology of aging is December the 7th, 2012. If it's more than a couple of years past that date, you might want to seek out a more recent uh, version of this talk. Uh, you can email me at cbreimer at uwo.ca with any questions regarding the material. So, the biology of aging. Uh, we accept as an overview that as you age, you become homeostenotic, uh, which means that what we call homeostasis refers to the ability to control your internal environment in the face of stress, in the face of cold or hot temperatures, in the face of dryness or wetness, uh, in the face of a whole variety of other uh, things that we encounter every day. Homeostenosis is a made-up medical word like vasculopath or acopia that we throw around when we uh, see older persons. Seems to reflect the age-related decline in homeostasis or diminished ability to respond to stressors. Particularly in flu season, particularly in hot summer months, we see this all of the time in our Canadian elderly populations. Usually this is related to a combination of psychosocial factors, illnesses, medications, 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 age-related changes and how several of your organ systems function as you age and we will get into those in a fair bit of detail today. In Canada, we have a world expert uh, on the biology of aging. He's also one of the uh, leading senescence re uh, genetic researchers in the world. His name is Jim Kirkland. Uh, Jim has been running a lab in Boston, Massachusetts for many years now. Uh, you can search his publications uh, on PubMed at, uh, as J.L. Kirkland. This one's 10 years old. I like it because I understand it. Uh, Jim basically uh, has summarized uh, a lot of the theories of aging uh, and um, reflects between those that suggest that aging is a more random process genetically versus a programmed uh, process that leads to uh, progressive decline in function uh, as we age. Uh, caloric restriction in animals, uh, simple animals, even some complicated animals has been shown to increase maximal lifespan. Um, as have a few other things that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, we believe that caloric restriction throughout the lifespan to a degree, uh, perhaps 1,500 calories a day uh, to 2,000 calories a day being a, a reasonable lifelong goal. Below 1,500 a day, your brain doesn't work so well. Beyond 2,000 a day, A, you get fat, B, you get lazy, C, your society gets decadent um, if, uh, if, if your societal caloric intake really is on average more than 2,000 calories a day. Um, and more than what that, what we're referring to here is senescence factors. With increased caloric intake, uh, senescence factors get turned on. And uh, so that uh, keeping those senescence factors turned off throughout the lifespan, we think is important for increasing uh, maximal lifespan. Um, senescence has evolved to prevent cancer. Uh, senescence uh, started with apoptosis genes. So these are the genes that get turned on uh, during um, um, development, embryonic development, uh, to, for instance, turn your uh, uh, fish fin of a, of, a, of a hand into a hand uh, by the turning on of apoptosis genes on all of the space between the fingers uh, so that it selectively eats away uh, all of the tissue uh, that would be between the fingers in that, uh, in that fish fin that uh, we all have embryonically for at least a very short period of time before apoptosis genes get turned on. Two exciting similar late life um, apoptotic or senescent factor genes are prohibin and p53. Uh, there are several others and literally um, more genes, uh, more senescence factors are being discovered every year um, as uh, molecular biologists do further research in this area. One of the other cool parts of aging, the programmed nature of aging, is that as you age with each mitotic division, the telomeres on your chromosomes get shorter. And uh, if you get rid of all of the telomeres on your chromosomes, they will not re, uh, they, they cannot uh, reproduce anymore and that cell stops reproducing even if it looks otherwise healthy. Uh, Dolly was a cloned sheep. Uh, Dolly's uh, subsequent sisters uh, were with which were cloned with um, longer and longer telomeres um, by uh, turning on telomerase um, prior to the cloning uh, made Dolly's sisters live much much longer than the original Dolly who was the first cloned sheep. Uh, so telomere loss is another uh, a reasonable explanation. We are not at the point now of uh, routinely uh, el elongating people's t telomeres in, in real life, um, although uh, this is certainly <coughs> something that's being explored uh, as a research possibility for prolonging lifespan in the future. So the quick fix is to increase your lifespan to near maximal. Don't smoke, but having said that, polluted air is a big factor. Please understand the lead levels in the air worldwide 
in the early 21st century are 600 times what they were in the early 20th century. Uh, no one thinks that breathing lead uh, is a, health, a healthy thing to do. Uh, there are s a huge number of other uh, pollutions. Uh, uh, CFCs, which were one of the early refrigerants, or another one, uh, ate away a large chunk of the ozone layer uh, and increased risk for cancer, not just skin cancer, but a variety of other cancers. Uh, so these are s two issues of air pollution. There are scads and scads of others that uh, we believe uh, are uh, reduced lifespan. Uh, smoking, uh, conservatively, uh, uh, half a pack a day to a pack a day, a lifelong will reduce your lifespan by somewhere between 10 and 17 years. Depends whether you're a conservative or an optimist or a pessimist, uh, how, depending how you look at it. We already spoke about senescence factors, but there's a whole slew of other things that obesity increases your risk for in terms of vascular disease, in terms of strokes, heart attacks, skin breakdown, um, uh, um, osteoarthritis, loss of mobility, etc. Exercising regularly, doctors in training uh, now uh, are far more likely to exercise regularly than 20 or 30 years ago and are also far more likely to eat right. Uh, whether this uh, is blue menu, whether this is low salt, whether this is low fat, whether this is uh, trying a gluten-free diet, substituting instead corn and rice and um, oats, uh, other, uh, other sources of, uh, of, of carbs as opposed to uh, um, wheat um, as, as a way to, uh, to uh, lose a bit of weight, but more than that, to, 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 to increase your lifespan to near maximal. So animals, uh, food restriction and hibernation are the two things proven to work. If you take squirrels that are um, um, adaptive hibernators, so squirrels living in Mississippi in the United States do not hibernate. They are awake and active year-round. Squirrels in northern Ontario hibernate typically for two or three or four months every winter. Squirrels in northern Ontario typically live 25 to 33 percent longer than squirrels in Mississippi. If you take a northern Ontario squirrel and move it to Mississippi, its lifespan shortens as it spends the entire year. So yes, you live longer with hibernation, but your waking time doesn't actually change. Uh, food restriction has been shown to work in a variety of animals, um, including small mammals, big mammals, um, and mid-sized mammals, uh, and it doesn't have to be severe. Um, the, uh, the way the um, calorie-restricted diets for many pets uh, are clearly increasing lifespan uh, for, on average, uh, for, for many uh, animals that people keep as pets. In cell culture, if you make the cell culture hypothyroid, uh, the cells will divide more slowly, but the number of divisions and the overall lifespan uh, increases. So again, this isn't something that's been proven to work in people, but it does work in cell cultures. So these are the quick fixes. Try them out if you, if you want to get near that max, which is about 120 years. And this is a huge change. 2,000 years ago, the best surveys we can find suggest that our average lifespan year-round was about 25 years. Yeah, I know, that reflects a massive infant mortality. But even 112 years ago in North America, average lifespan was less than 50 years. Uh, now in Canada, we're over 80, and it's getting longer every year. Uh, the best recorded um, data uh, for persons in terms of lifespan suggests that the oldest human beings for whom we can accurately record their date of birth, their date of death, is about 122 years. And this is a cartoon brick wall, which I, by which I mean you can find lots of people over the last 50 years who have lived to between 115 and 122 years. When I say a lot of people, I mean several hundred. Uh, beyond 122, nobody. And what's happening is the likelihood that people are living longer is going up, and you will see this, the, 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 the distribution of age at death, going up and up and up from 80 all the way up perhaps to as high as 120 uh, over the next 50 years. And this has huge demographic Im implications. If people average lifespan really does get over 100 in the next 50 years, uh, we have a big problem in terms of the distribution of resources worldwide because those people predominantly are living in first world countries and are sucking up uh, and they're more than their fair share of world resources in terms of power, in terms of clean water, uh, in terms of uh, um, food and a lot of other stuff. Uh, so this, this, and this will obviously be a, a huge contributor to this. Uh, Boom, Bust, and Echo by, I believe the author is uh, Foot, F-O-O-T-E, uh, is a reasonable review of the implications of this if you uh, like reading around your subjects. George Burns died at 99. George Burns, in, when he was 98, said that dying is not popular. It's never caught on. 
it's bad for your complexion. It upsets your daily routine and leaves you with too much time on your hands. He's an expert uh, who has expertise in what it's like to live into your 90s and was uh, an amazing comedian into his 90s, uh, before your time, but still. So in a nutshell, there are many physiologic functions that change with age. There's a big variation between individuals, and uh, research, especially research done in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, often wasn't very uh, specific about sorting out whether the change in function was related to age or related to disease, given that many diseases were so prevalent, especially then in folks in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, trying to find somebody who you were absolutely sure was disease-free in those ages uh, was often difficult to do. So we'll start with vital signs. Uh, when we say a temp in an old person, and I mean over 70, we mean 37.9 or higher. Why? Because two out of three people showing up in the eMERGE, this is the reference, who are over 75 and have a temp of 37.9 or higher are seriously infected. A third are septic. A third have a serious UTI and or pneumonia uh, as an underlying cause or an abdominal, intra and abdominal infection. Um, in, by contrast, if you're in your 20s, uh, a serious temp usually means over 39.5. Uh, and the likelihood it's viral below 39.5 is the overwhelming majority uh, of cases. So a temp in old people means 37.9. Your response in terms of your heart rate going up uh, when you stand up, if, you're, if your volume depleted, um, uh, your heart rate and blood pressure response when you stand up uh, decline with age, which means you're more likely to have an orthostatic drop uh, in blood pressure as you age without a compensatory increase in heart rate. It also means that old people don't get that rapid tachycardia when you get a little volume depleted, i.e. with an acute GI bleed that young people do. Young people drop a unit or two GI bleed, they barf it up, their heart rate reliably goes up into the hundreds. Old people, not so much. As we age, we don't tolerate low or high heart rates very well. Dizziness, confusion, falls are very common in 80-year-olds beyond the, when their heart rate gets below 60. Flip side, when their heart rate gets beyond 110, both because of loss of atrial kick at those rates and also because of increased left ventricular stiffness and hence slower filling at that age, older persons are much more likely to develop rate-related congestive heart failure with heart rates above 110, even above 100 if you're 90, uh, than do younger persons. When you are dying of natural causes, your core temperature will gradually drop from almost 37 to 36 to 35 to 34 to 33. That's around death. Um, literally every week or two as you, as you die o over weeks. Having said that, normal aging is not associated with a low core temp uh, and is not um, um, okay. Uh, you should be looking for causes for that. As you age, your skin gets thinner. The collagen under it gets thinner, and that means there's less support uh, for your skin, which means it break, the blood vessels under the skin break more easily. These are what are called liver spots or age spots that are often seen in the backs of the hands and the arms. It takes very, very little trauma to an older person's arm. They brush against the table, and a day or two later, they've got a large, dark bruise that is in the subcutaneous tissue that is so thin, and the skin over it is so thin. They often get very uh, easy skin tears, again, from, from uh, uh, min minimal trauma. So the skin is more lax, it's less resilient, um, and as well there's fewer sweat glands there. Uh, the sebaceous gland number doesn't change, but this, uh, the sebaceous glands get bigger. So literally, your skin pores become larger, uh, and the stuff coming out of them drops off, uh, and these, this combination uh, leads to, to subtle changes um, in, in skin as well, but basically you don't tend to sweat quite as much as you age. Thank God. Uh, your nails grow more slowly. You don't have to trim them as often. You lose fat in your face and in the backs of your hands and the bottoms of your feet. The bottoms of your feet is a problem, both for balance and for pain. So as you lose the fat pads under your feet, uh, it becomes more painful and uh, more unsteady to walk around barefoot. So somewhere between age 50 and 70, most people, myself included, start needing nicely padded shoes with good arch support in order to reduce foot pain and also to improve our balance. Um, this is hard for many folks, like my mother who likes to run around barefoot, to accept. Uh, it's an unfortunate, from her perspective, uh, normal part of aging. Um, in terms of where you accumulate fat in, su as sub in the subcutaneous tissue, that occurs in the waists of men and the thighs of women, neither of whom are happy about this, I'm afraid. Your wound healing is also delayed with increasing age. As you age, your hair grows more slowly. Yeehaw, less, less haircuts. Uh, so I don't have to go to first choice quite as often as I used to when I was in my 30s. Um, you be, your thinner scalp hairs become more numerous. Your thicker scalp hairs become less numerous, so your hair appears somewhat thinner on average. 
Uh, you lose melanocytes in your hair faster than in your skin, which is why your hair goes gray before your skin. Uh, 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 tone changes. Uh, of all of the places on your body where your hair turns gray, your axillary hair is the most reliable sign of age. Other places we go gray often on our the tops of our heads in our 20s, uh, even sooner, but uh, most folks uh, it, they're more reliable by 50s, 60s, 70s. It's the gray hair in the axilla we're referring to. Women grow hair, facial hair more uh, as, the, as they age, whereas men grow eyebrow and nostril hair and ear hair more most. Uh, so trying to look into an old man's ears, you're way more likely to see wax accumulation than in an old woman. This is because the hair in his ears is, is accumulating and globbing up the wax, which can lead to all sorts of terrible problems, uh, including otitis uh, externa, uh, in, in especially in older men. So you lose your muscle bulk with aging. You lose your fast twitch fibers more than your slow twitch fibers, which means you are better for, uh, you're okay still for long distance running and for more endurance activities, but you're not as good at sprinting. Uh, I've given up basketball for this very reason. P plus my Achilles aren't so hot anymore. Uh, not universal and your cardiac and your diaphragm are spared. Your cartilage gets bad. Remember that there's two major types of collagen uh, contributors that are genetic differences. Um, people with osteoarthritis uh, that's familial and onset in their 40s and 50s are way more likely to have a, a poor quality cartilage that uh, wears out faster uh, than people that literally get to 80 and have virtually no osteoarthritis either clinically or histologically when you look at uh, the, the, you know, what the quality and the amount of the cartilage left in their major joint joints. So with age, your cartilage becomes less watery, less hyaluronic acid, more keratin sulfate, which is to say gristle, uh, and hence it works less well as a slickery, easily sliding surface um, uh, to preserve uh, uh, function in, in these folks. We all lose bone as we age. Uh, it's accelerated at the time of osteoporosis with women. We lose the horizontal supports and trabecular bone more than anywhere else, which means you're more likely to get collapse of bones with less trauma as you age. Uh, the skulls, ribs, femur, hand bones get thicker but are less dense. Uh, microfracture repair rates are down, and there's a generalized uh, loss of osteoblastic activity relative to osteoclastic activity. It just means repairs are slower, uh, and that uh, although some bones get thicker, that doesn't mean they're stronger. And the, uh, the trabecular bone horizontal support loss means we're much more likely to get compression fractures in our vertebral spine uh, as we age, even without uh, the presence of osteoporosis. Two quotes. The second one is uh, part of the Desiderata, but I've uh, bastardized it shortly. Max Ehrman wrote the Desiderata, and one of the lines, take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth, but not sex. We'll get to that. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, and keep your insurance up to date. Uh, the life expectancy benefit of universal health care in Canada is estimated at about one and a half years which I think is impressive, uh, and I'm, I suspect it will get bigger over time. The top quote, again, a French poet, to know how to grow old, the masterwork of wisdom, and one of the most difficult chapters in the great art of living. The older we get, the more different we get, and you'll meet people that are aging way more successfully and gracefully than others. The ones that are doing so successfully and gracefully are a marvel, uh, and it's fun talking to them and uh, being part of their life even for just a little while in geriatrics. Enjoy the color blue while you are young, because as you age, the lens of your eye becomes yellow. This is the accumulation of lipofuchsin pigments, and this leads to blue things not looking blue anymore. Instead, they look green. Uh, once you get your cataracts taken out and your new lens is put in, ha, blue will reappear and the world will look beautiful. As well, the lens becomes less elastic, and the ciliary muscles, which cause the lens to contract, to change its shape to, in order to accommodate to see short, the ciliary muscles basically poop out as well and are less able to squeeze your lens so that you can see things at short distance. This means your arms get too short and you have to get reading glasses uh, to be able to see things at a short distance. Beyond this change in vision, your static acuity uh, uh, gets worse because the lens, uh, because of the lipofuchsin and other stuff, particulate accumulation, uh, there's more scattering of light by the lens. Um, 
moving object, object acuity declines, uh, it takes you several more seconds for your pupils to adapt as you move from light to dark or back again. Uh, and uh, the things that are proven to reduce risk of cataracts uh, uh, more than vitamins, uh, although you can take them if you like, uh, are wearing sunglasses and not smoking. And we would like to believe that the, 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 uh, the changes in both of these areas means that people are, aren't going to get cataracts nearly as much uh, through the 21st century as they did in the late 20th century. That remains to be proven. Hearing. It's amazing that hearing aids work at all, and it's amazing that we're all not deaf by the time we're about 60. Why? Because as you age, your tympanic membrane thickens, uh, the bones in the ear uh, de degenerate, and uh, the hair cells and cochlear neurons drop off. Uh, this seems partly related to noise and partly just related to, to, to age. You lose your high frequency first. Speech discrimination declines such that, uh, that uh, and the, combi the combination of all of these things uh, means that uh, uh, they, they're combined with a diminished acoustic reflex, which can lead to hypersensitivity to loud sounds. Uh, the fact that hearing aids work as well as they do is, uh, is, is quite amazing. Hearing aids are improving, uh, and for someone that hasn't had a new one at least every five or ten years, I highly recommend it, uh, as the quality of hearing improvement they can get from a device is generally better than even five or ten years ago. How do I get old people to hear me, given that a third of them have significant hearing problems? A, I turn on the lights. B, I put on their glasses. C, I clean their glasses. D, so they can lip read, because most folks who have hearing problems have learned how to lip read, which means E, I have to speak directly to their eyes at all time. I can't be turning my head or moving around while I'm talking. Uh, and F, I have to use my deepest, darkest voice, because they lose high frequency faster than low frequency. This means that they don't hear girls' voices as well as they hear boys' voices. Um, and uh, so uh, putting on your deepest, darkest voice while you're doing all this stuff. Portable hearing aids are also cheap now. I got one for five bucks at the dollar store last week. Uh, and reduce risk for delirium, we believe, when old people are admitted to hospital if they have significant hearing problems. That's a randomized trial yet to be done, but uh, if you're interested, please let me know. Your brain shrinks starting with university. Oh dear. Age 26-ish. Um, uh, and so head trauma becomes more of an issue because your brain slides around in your skull more with uh, typical day-to-day -day trauma, including motor vehicle accidents and getting uh, knocked off your bicycle, uh, for example, as well as uh, what we consider semi-contact sports, such as soccer. Uh, the number of neurons in the cerebellum and cerebral cortex only go down a little. The place you really lose neurons is in the substantia nigra as well as in the locus ceruleus. And in these places, the loss is so severe and is so uh, prevalent by age 80 that um, you wonder why more people don't have Parkinson's, for instance which would be the dopaminergic uh, neuron loss we're speaking of. Spinal motor neuron loss is about 1% a year beyond age 60, which is also a problem. Here's the deal. Your neuronal plasticity is now, we know, maintained into ripe old age. People grow thousands of functional new neurons in many parts of their brain in response to planned activity, even when they're 80 and 90 years old, juggling, learning new languages, even vigorously walking for 45 minutes a day for five times a week for a year. Each of these has been shown to cause you to grow thousands of new functional neurons in several parts of your brain. This is very cool research. A recent publication that uh, reviews all of this is called The Wisdom Paradox by Elkanon Goldberg. G-O-L-D-B-E-R-G is his last name. You can get it at Chapters or Amazon, and I highly recommend it. It's a good book. It's easy to read. Your barrel reflex sensitivity goes down, which makes you more likely to be syncopal, uh, and your reflexes are a little bit slower. These aren't as major as the things at the top of the slide. Your temperature sensitivity goes down. Hoo -hoo, you can eat cold ice cream without getting that ice cream headache. Yay! Vibration sensitivity goes down. I've given my tuning fork to my children, and they go and play May the Force Be With You with that. You don't perceive pain as intensely anywhere which means both you're more likely to get abscesses and serious infections because you didn't feel it going, uh, and you're also more likely not to have any guarding or rebound when you have acute peritonitis. So less than a quarter of old people with acute peritonitis will actually have uh, guarding or rebound, which is why we do a lot of screening abdopelvic CTs in old people that present in the eMERGE with even mild abdo pain or they're off and we think they may have something going on in their abdomen. You could say this is a, a misuse of technology or over-testing. Eh, I think it reflects a, a realistic 
uh, ad adaptation of practice given that we can't reliably rule out an acute abdomen based on physical signs in older persons uh, in most cases and I think this is important. Sleep. Enjoy seven, eight, nine, ten hours of sleep a night when you're young because you ain't going to get that when you're old. Average goes down an hour a night from 50 to 75 and about another hour a night to 85 which means you're down to about five and a half hours a night average by age 85. More than that, that five and a half hours, it takes you longer to get to sleep. You're spending less of it in REM in stage three and more of it in stage one and two. The number of awakenings you get in that five and a half hours is much higher as well. So sleep is just not as efficient or as much fun when you are 85 as when you are 30. Um, do we think this may be related to tryptophan metabolism changes uh, in many older persons? Uh, we've tried melatonin to help with, uh, with sleep. Uh, it's been shown to help reduce risk for delirium. And the dose doesn't seem to matter. Anywhere between half a milligram and five milligrams a night has seemed to be, it seems to be equally effective. Melatonin doesn't work in adults between the ages of 18 and 55. It does in the elderly. It does in kids. I have no idea why that is. If you find out, please let me know. Your heart. This is fun. So now that I am in my 50s, um, I have the maximum heart rate that I can achieve with exercise is less. So my max heart rate is 220 minus my age. So the, and more than that, when we exercise for good fitness, you want to get about 75% of your max heart rate. Cool. So I'm 55-ish. Uh, that means my max heart rate is 165 by 80%. That means I only have to get up to about 130 beats a minute, yes, in order to achieve that, uh, that, that, that threshold. Your cardiac output goes down with age, mostly because um, your heart rate, um, the, the, the ability to fill your ventricle is going down. It only goes down a little bit, but it happens by increasing uh, stroke volume um, and, uh, the, uh, and we become more dependent on our atrial kick. Uh, having a stiff left ventricle that fills more slowly is very common with old age but it remains to be seen whether that's normal aging or disease related we're honestly not sure um, the likely response to sympathetic stimulation is less so uh, with beta agonists you don't get as much of a tachycardia as you do when you are young uh, and intracellular calcium stays higher longer which means that uh, that this we think this is in some way associated with uh, left ventricular stiff stiffness as well your total peripheral resistance increases, the major arteries get stiffer. We think these are age-related changes and not disease-related changes. Um, and about half of people over the age of 6, 75 will have uh, a heart murmur. Most of them, it's a one out of six systolic murmur across a asclerotic aortic valve. So by all means, you're often rewarded by hearing a heart murmur in an 80-year-old, more so than in a 40-year-old. But most of the time, it's a fairly benign thing that does not contribute much to their, uh, their health care uh, management. Your PO2 goes down as you age. Rough estimate of what your PO2 is supposed to be on room air is 100 um, minus your age divided by 3. So um, 70 is a normal PO2 in a 90-year-old, uh, which makes it harder often to determine if they've, uh, if they've had a VQ mismatch if their AA gradient has increased. Um, and, and, but it's, it's important to, 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 to do this and to figure it out because often we miss uh, contributors uh, to VQ mismatch or to... Um, uh, hypoxia in older persons on this basis. Uh, your total lung capacity stays the same but your vital capacity goes down which means your residual volume goes up which means which is all because you lose some of your elasticity of your lung parenchyma because of age-related changes in collagen and elastin. So the small airways uh, col uh, open a little more slowly and, f and fully and collapse more quickly and more easily which uh, leads to all of these changes uh, in lung function as mentioned. GI, uh, big issues are in the mouth and in the liver. Uh, your, uh, in your lifetime as a doctor, dentures will go from being something you see maybe once a week or once a month to maybe once a year because dental care through the lifespan has improved hugely uh, in the last 50 years. So people aren't losing all their teeth the way they used to. Um, the uh, pulp space loss, which is a normal part of aging, means that your teeth become less sensitive, both to very hot and very cold foods. Uh, also means you can get abscesses more easily that you don't notice uh, early on. Uh, so a good look in the mouth is, 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 is important in an old person because they can't feel in there the way that they used to. Small age-related changes in liver function mean that mostly alcohol and meds need to reduce in terms of dose. So alcohol clearance is age, sex, and weight related, and the size of a drink in an 80-year-old woman that weighs 100 pounds is pretty small. It's about a third 
the size of a drink in a 20-year-old man. Meds, especially neuro, um, neuroleptics, narcotics, and nitrates, we automatically reduce the doses of these meds in older persons because of decline in liver function. They don't clear them as quickly. Uh, the first pass effect isn't a big, as big, ergo they get much higher system levels from the same doses uh, that you would give to, uh, to, to younger persons. GI motility, uh, there's less of an increase in GI motility in old people if you give them a dose of food. Uh, they're more likely to get constipated uh, and they're also more sensitive to all of the other factors that cause constipation in hospitalized people. They're in pain, they're not active, uh, they're dehydrated and their potassium is low. We do this, we have this, this occurs frequently uh, to older persons in the hospital and uh, these are factors that, uh, that, that often contribute to gang up and cause constipation in, in this group. This is an old paper. This paper is, wow, 74 years old. Uh, proved 74 years ago that as you age, you lose your renal concentrating capacity. I'm referring to a 74-year-old paper because it's important. And what this means is that old kidneys are stupid. Old kidneys cannot conserve water nor get rid of water uh, as well as they ought to. So if we give them too much IV fluids, they won't get rid of it. They'll go into congestive heart failure, iatrogenic fluid overload because we gave them too much fluids. Flip side, because they can't conserve water, they get dehydrated more easily uh, and they don't get as much thirst response as a younger person would in response to dehydration. Ergo, they get dry more quickly, more easily without warning uh, uh, than, than would younger persons as well. And they're often not even aware of it. Uh, GFR tends to decline with age, as does bladder capacity. The postvoid residual tends to go up with increasing age, as does the frequency of uninhibited detrusor contractions. And at least 15% of all old people lose their circadian rhythm to peeing, which means that you and I can drink all day, drink all night, we'll still do most of our peeing between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., i.e. during the daytime hours, so it won't screw up our sleep. 15% of all persons 85 and older lose this, and many of them actually do most of their peeing at night. Uh, and this nocturia is a huge problem to their sleep uh, and often reduces energy because they're up so often at night. And a lot of these folks, if they're not on a diuretic, I'll give them a small dose of desmopressin, DDAVP, 0.1 milligram a night in old men, 0.05 milligrams a night in old women, and often will gratifyingly see this improve. Hematologic changes, the only age-related changes are your inflammatory markers go up, specifically your erythrocyte sedimentation rate, your ESR, your C-reactive protein, a little bit. Generally not beyond 20 for an ESR in normal aging. Um, and CRRP, I can't tell you, I don't know the number. The likelihood of your being rheumatoid factor, ANA, and VDRL positive just because you're old uh, goes up and is 14, 18, 10% of, of 70 year olds. The likelihood of heme malignancies goes up with increasing age. This may have something to do with pollutants as well. Roughly 30% of people who have a monoclonal gammopathy, which is 3% of seniors, will develop myeloma or CLL over the next 15 years. Myeloma, chronic le uh, lymphocytic leukemia, and myelodysplasia are the most common, and uh, by age 80, uh, a fair number of elderly persons will, will have one of these. How we define diabetes, changes as you age. Um, impaired glucose tolerance, which is uh, a fast as a, a two hour over 12, I believe, uh, is, is the norm. Most Canadian elder elderly have uh, impaired glucose tolerance. Uh, a fasting glucose uh, over uh, 8 is still a reasonable definition in the elderly for diabetes. HbA1c over 06 or 065, depending on which guideline you, you use, is a, is a legitimate um, uh, definition for diabetes in the elderly as well. Um, about 10% of old people will have their TSH go up at some point in old age related to antimicrosomal antibodies. More than this, uh, if you're on thyroid replacement, the dose you need will go down over age because um, the, your clearance of thyroid hormone declines with increasing age. Uh, and this can be up to 50% as, as a person goes from age 50 to age 75. Your growth hormone levels go down, as does GHRH, stimulated release of growth hormone. Um, and uh, we think this may be reversible with, co con uh, with consequent improvement in lean muscle mass and bone density and thicker skin uh, if we give uh, stimulants, uh, uh, growth hormone secretagogues uh, or um, uh, mimickers such as capromorelin. Again, this is a cool area of, of recent research. Um, 
We mentioned DDAVP a little earlier. Uh, declines in DDAVP can be a problem um, and um, can be correctable. Um, and last but not least, uh, DHEA levels have been shown to decline onwards, and people have been trying to give this as an anti-aging drug without success so far. Uh, reproductive changes. Um, the Estrogen levels decline uh, starting at menopause. Uh, the ovaries involute, um, the, uh, the breasts involute. There's a loss of muscular tone and relaxation of the ligaments around the breast, which also lead to loss of breast contour. The female urethra with loss of estrogen goes from being four centimeters long to about two and a half centimeters long. The mucosa lining it gets much thinner as well. Giving estrogen can help with the thickness of the urethral lining, but not with the length of the urethra, and uh, is uh, not necessarily a benefit in terms of continence, uh, urinary continence in, in, in older women. In men, the prostate gets bigger. Uh, sperm levels and morphology only gradually go down. 98% of old people would be having sex if they had a willing uh, or able or both partner. Uh, finding a comfortable position is often difficult uh, for older patients. Uh, Alex Comfort has written a Joy of Sex version for uh, older persons. That is a wonderful book that I've often recommended to, to my older patients. Um, although vaginal lubrication declines with menopause, um, there otherwise sexual changes with menopause are not consistent. Uh, in men, it takes longer to get an erection. It takes longer uh, to, 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 to achieve ejaculation, and the period between uh, ejaculating once and being able to do so again gets longer and longer and longer, literally, from minutes in, in an 18-year-old guy to often days to weeks in an 80-year-old man. Immunologically, we get stupid as we age, and this is hugely variable. Some of us get very immunologically stupid in our 60s, and others only get gradually immunologically stupid in our 80s. Uh, when I say stupid, I mean both lots of autoantibodies, but more importantly, uh, an impaired proliferative response to antigen and smaller delayed responses to mitogenic stimulation. There's the cells are there, they don't do what they're supposed to do, which makes, frail, which makes old people much more risk for overwhelming sepsis and also much more risk for dying because of an opportunistic infection, something that wouldn't kill or even hurt you or me. Uh, I've seen pneumocystis infections, which we associate with HIV-associated pneumonia in HIV-negative 80-year-olds who get pneumocystis pneumonia just because they're 80. Um, and so, again, this is, this is a, a flagrant example of immunologic stupidity. And if we could figure out how to fix this, I think we would go a long way towards uh, improving quality of life in old age and perhaps even extending lifespan beyond 120 years. Another French poet, 80 years old. No eyes, no ears, no teeth, no legs, no wind. And when an all is said and done, how astonishingly well one can do without them. Yes, so figuring out how to do this as you age uh, is challenging. We do so variably. Some folks do this amazingly well and others not so much. Um, so to summarize, organ system change due to age is uh, very common in the elderly in the way as I've described and is often mistaken for disease. Unless you understand what is normal, it, it is very hard to distinguish between normal and um, uh, abnormal uh, in older persons. Homeostenosis, uh, particularly for temperature, pulse, free water clearance, and pain perception can make disease presentation much less remarkable and much, much, much easier to miss in frail older persons. So. These are the six changes, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six changes that happen, we almost for sure believe, just because of aging in old people, i.e., they will happen in every human being as they age. Your hair will turn gray, don't know when, but it will. Your lens in your eye will thicken. Your thymus will involute, and you will get immunologically stupid. In women, you will achieve menopause, and there will be accelerated bone loss at around the time of menopause. The pulp cavity in your teeth will shrink, and the teeth, you will get less pain perception uh, related to that. And if we take your, cultured, your cells from your body and try to culture them, their ability to replicate will decline uh, as, you, uh, as you get older. These six and only these six. All of the others, there's some debate as to, for many of them, whether it's age or disease related. I hope this list gets longer with good research over the next 50 years, uh, but time will tell. UB Blake was a jazz musician who grew up playing honky-tonk piano in a brothel in New Orleans. Despite that humble 
and compromised beginning. He lived to age 100 and wrote literally thousands of amazing songs uh, through his lifespan. And at age 100, he was quoted as saying, if I'd known I was going to live this long, I'd have taken better care of myself, which makes you wonder at age 100. So thank you for your attention. Please email me if you have questions uh, about uh, the materials discussed in this, uh, in this presentation. Uh, and I hope this has been of help.